So I've been wearing this makeup look pretty much for a month straight and I can't believe that I haven't actually sat down and filmed it and talked through it. And I'm gonna do that today because sometimes when you just find a really good makeup routine, it can be really hard to quit it and try other things. I've done it in vlogs here and there, but I just wanted to sit down and dedicate this video to this makeup look so then we can move on and try some other new things. But for now, I am living for this makeup and I wanted to show you everything that I'm doing. If you like these everyday makeup looks, these go-to makeup looks, and you want me to keep doing them, like I'm happy to do them on like a monthly basis. Seeing what's in my everyday makeup bag, please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos from me. And without further ado, my friends, let's just dive in to the makeup. So the first product that I've been using was actually new in for me in April. And this is the Key Soul Care Let Me Glow Illuminating Serum. I actually went to a Key Soul Care event in April and I was really excited to give this a go. It's been going viral on TikTok and it's actually been a really gorgeous primer. Let me just show you the juices, look at that. Super nice, it's like really, really nice and thick and really illuminating, it gives such a nice glow. I've done all of my skincare underneath this and I'm kind of just using this as a last step. And it's really pretty, it has a slight scent and I'm super sensitive to most fragrances but this one isn't like too off-putting or anything. So I just smooth that all over and it feels so good and it makes the skin look so juicy and dewy. Ugh. It's been such a beautiful base and I've been loving it. Now for the foundation, there's so many bases. There's so many foundations, tinted moisturizers, beautiful products that I have been trying and loving. Products that are in my collection, I just, I can't stop reaching for the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I am like swiftly making my way through this. It's so good. I do have a little bit of a tan, a natural tan and a fake tan nicely applied onto my body. So I am still using the shade four, but I did in fact pick up the lighter shade two finally to have for when I'm in my more pale moments, but I just love it so much. I feel like she made a perfect skin foundation and I just really can't stop reaching for it. I'm going to, I have all intentions of swapping out the foundations in my makeup bag, but as far as a go-to has been, I just can't stop reaching for this. It's so, so good. No matter what you apply it with, if you use your fingers, if you use a sponge, if you use a brush, it's just great. I'm gonna use a sponge today, so I just put it in the palm of my hand and I'm just gonna blend that out all over my face. And I just, it just like, completely mimics the look of my skin. And it just has that really nice, like natural dewy finish. And it's got great coverage that you can really, really sheer out or you can build it up to like a medium-ish. I just can't stop reaching for it. It's honestly one to try and kind of like, like the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, the MAC Face and Body, like those products that I just never stop reaching for. Like this foundation is going into my all time favorites, best foundation products ever. It's one of those scenarios where if all my makeup disappeared, what would I repurchase? Like right now, this would be the first thing that I would repurchase truly. It's so good. It's just the most beautiful dewy finish and hopefully like filming in the natural light, you guys can really, really see the, the magic of it. This foundation really is that honestly. And ooh, I've also had some like very warm weather events and encounters lately. And I hadn't actually yet tested it out in hot weather and it lasted. Oh my God. I was sitting at an event in LA and it was, I don't think it was 29 degrees. It was like 29 degrees or 32 degrees Celsius or something. We were literally sitting baking in the sun. It was so hot. We were all melting and my skin still looked great after. So this, this whole makeup look really is like contributing to that fact, but yeah, I can't, I can't stop using this. Next, I'm gonna go in and do concealer and contour. And I've kind of been playing a little bit in terms of my methods of how I'm applying this. Like sometimes I will apply the contour first, sometimes I'll apply the concealer first. And then I go like in between the two products. I don't really have a rhyme or reason. Today, I'm gonna to use the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I pulled this back out of the archives just cause I wanted to switch it up, but these are a forever favorite in my collection. And I also actually pulled out the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate because <laughs> there was like a dry film on top of this. And I was like, no, I can't let this expire. I must use this. I need to pull it back out and use up the contour because it's so beautiful. And I refuse to not get like all my money's worth out of this contour. So I pulled this back out of the archives so I can give it some love. And I think for fun today, we'll just start with the contour. But again, it kind of just depends on how I'm feeling that day, which one I go for first. So I'm taking my Smith 157 brush. This year, I feel like I've really changed up the way that I've been applying my makeup. Like before I used to just put my contour like right under that cheekbone like so many of us did. And I feel like so many of us have adopted this style of applying the contour like higher up on the cheekbone and really, really fusing it into the rest of the skin. 
And I think it's made such a difference for me in my everyday makeup because it just really gives it that true, true natural glow and shape to the face. I have been loving it so much. And I just continue this all the way up to my hairline. Also, I put a headband on today because I washed my hair with something that is not the K18 <laughs> mask today. And my hair is just like a frizzy mess. Oh my God, I'm letting it air dry and then I'm gonna style it after, but I just had to hide it away <laughs> with the headband because it's just like, damn, it's just not the same. Anyway, yeah, taking this contour and just doing it along my jawline. Then I switch and take a little brush, also dip it into the contour and I just run that along my nose. And then we'll apply the concealer on top after, which kind of helps to just blend it all out. And I really like the effect that it has. And sometimes I'll also take the contour and just run it around my lips. I remember I did that in a video once and everyone was like, oh my God, your lips look so bad. What happened? And I was like, oh, <laughs> I literally just put contour around it and like hadn't blended it out fully. But once you apply concealer and whatnot, I think it has a really nice effect. It's kind of like, it almost gives the illusion of like pre lip liner. Anywho, I'm going to keep that out because we might dip back and forth. I just kind of keep the brushes lingering. And once we apply the concealer, we can go in and fix anything or perfect anything if we need. So I'm taking my deeper shade of the NARS concealer. This one's the shade Custard. <laughs> and I'm going in with this. And I'm starting out with this shade and like adding in any extra coverage that I want. And this is like the perfecting step. It's like an extra layer of coverage on our lovely, glowing, juicy base. So just kind of doing a little extra chisel around the cheeks, attacking any of the redness around my like nose and mouth, and we'll, we'll leave that there. This one, I haven't been letting it set so much. If I'm honest, I kind of just go in and blend it and it's been fine. So I just take my same beauty sponge and I blend that in. I've also actually, a lot of the time, been doing this with a brush. I've been using like the Katie Jane Hughes little brush, or I've also been using this lovely little It Cosmetics 102 brush, which has been nice. I'm just using this sponge today because I have cleaned it and it's here and ready for me, so I'm just blending that in. But I have been living the brush life a lot. It's kind of been surprising. It's something that I usually like play with if we do like a makeup artist recreation or something, and I know that so many makeup artists do use brushes. I prefer the sponge, but I've been really warming up to the brush life, truly, when it comes to blending out concealer. So anyway, just blending this in. Oop. Taking a little bit of the excess and putting it onto my eyelids. And so I blended out that concealer and now I'll just kind of go back in with the brush and I'm just running that around. Sometimes I can make this line like really harsh. So I just kind of press over it just to continue marrying the two colors together. And then if I wanna add a little bit of extra like brightness and highlighting, I'll go in with my lighter shade. This is the shade Vanilla. And I just put that right into the inner corners of my eyes and really like lift up this region. And maybe a little bit on my nose too. You can just do like the center of the face and this will just highlight. And I'm just gonna do the same thing and blend that in with my beauty blender. Sometimes like right here, right in the inner corner, I do just like to take a little kabuki brush. This is the Sigma P84. I've had this for years, 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 years. And just because I don't wanna like ruin any of the contour I've like put on my nose and sometimes the <laughs> beauty blender is just like a little bit too big for the area. It's easier to just take this and kind of focus it more right in that inner corner. And then I'll go back to the sponge and just whoop, 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 blend this out. Really, really giving so much life and brightness to the under eye area. I'm obsessed. All right, let's add in some color. I've been doing a little bit of layering with my blushes and I'm gonna start with the cream blush. I can't get enough of this Pearl Beauty Girl Next Door blush. Brush. It's always a mixture of brush. Blush. <laughs> this beautiful little angel here. I love the packaging. It's so cute. And I love the color. I've been using my Refer 04 brush and I just go right onto the bullet. And I'm kind of applying this in the same manner like I've been doing with my contour where I'm just really like fusing it all over the cheek area. I've really been like over applying this, going really, really heavy handed with it because it's actually such a sheer formula that you really can. You can really, really build up the color and it will still be this like beautiful, natural, sheer look. And I've kind of like, I've almost been replacing highlight with this. I don't know. I've like not really been using highlight over the last few weeks and just kind of 
doing this like beautiful diffused blush look instead, which I think is really, really fun and fresh for spring and summer. I actually haven't worn this so much like with my orange blush, like Picante, but I think that would actually be so pretty too for summery vibes. But yeah, this is a really, really beautiful pink shade for every day. It's super, super soft. And I just really, really lightly pat that all over. Like I kind of go onto the brow bone, bring it towards the hairline and just like drag it all along that cheek area. I'll take a little bit too and just like boop, boop, pat it on the nose. And yeah, just kind of like really, really freely and softly apply this. And I think it just gives such a natural looking flush. I love it so much. So I'm gonna leave that, that's it for that blush. And then if I wanna build up the color after, I actually go in with another blush. So let's set with powder first. I'm taking the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. And I'm taking a really nice light dusting of that. Just anywhere that we've applied the concealer, basically. And this is a tip that I've heard from multiple people now, that before you go in with like your baking powder that you put a nice light powder on top. Melissa Herkman, the fabulous makeup artist, uh, did this on me during my nude stick shoot earlier this year and I've kind of been doing it since and I like the effect. I think it does give that very, very airbrushed, flawless finish look. So just really lightly applying that all over. And then I will take the Laura Mercier setting powder with my beauty blender. I dip it into the powder and I pat it off on the back of my hand and I just use that to kind of go in and do a second layer. And this has been really helpful for like the events for the event aspect and the longevity aspect. If I just am doing my like normal everyday makeup, I don't need my makeup to last. I'm just like hanging out at home. Maybe I'm filming like one video. I don't necessarily have to do this step. This just kind of, in my experience, has really like locked in the makeup and made it last forever. So all I did, I did a dip for each under eye and then like using the excess product, I just really, really lightly pat the sponge around the rest of the face. And that kind of prevents like over applying. It prevents any like dry tightness feeling if you do have dry skin and it just locks everything in. It's honestly magic. I will take the brush after and just kind of lightly like pat it around just in case there's any <laughs> excess product. I'm not technically baking because I'm not like over applying and I'm not removing anything after. But I do think that if you have dry skin, like baking can be a little bit too much and this is a nice alternative. So now that the powder is applied, I go in and soak my face in my Benefit Professional Super Setter Spray and I just do so much of this all over. It feels so good. And while that setting spray is all soaking in, I will go ahead and do my brows. There's a few brow products that I am itching to try, <laughs> but I'm gonna save that for a separate video and just do the go-to that I've been using. This is my Dior Brow Styler, and I also have the Got2B be Brow Glue, which I just am teasing you all with because I know that this is really geographically impossible to get your hands on, so I am sorry for that, but any brow gel will do, my friends. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my brows and give them my, my usual nice fluffy look. All right, so the brows are on and the base is just looking glowing and so happy. I'm gonna go ahead and do the lips because if you guys follow all of my woes, you'll know that there are a lot of days where I just skip eye makeup altogether, especially lately I've been skipping the mascara a lot. So I would just throw a lip on and kind of leave it like this. I'm gonna like show you it in layers. So the lip, naturally, my Victoria Beckham O2 Lip Definer that just keeps holding on, honestly. The nubbin just keeps surviving and I just, do a little bit of this. I just gave her a fresh sharpen so she's nice and crisp. And I line my lips and draw a little bit of it like onto the lip as well. I don't just do a line. Like I do fill in a lot of the lip with the lip liner and then I just diffuse it even more with my finger. And I think it's just habit for so many years, but I always slightly overdraw my lip. I just go a little bit above the lip line and kind of just give it a little bit more of a plumpy pout. You could totally just leave it at the lip liner, but last month I had discovered this lovely little Surratt Lip Sleek. This is the shade Pom Pom, and it's a beautiful, beautiful, like juicy little pink. I have a lot of products that are similar to this. I really love this packaging, and I love the brightness of the pink, and I, I love to pair like really bright colors, like whether it be my bright oranges or my bright pinks with my neutral lip liners, and I think it just gives it, like it diffuses it a little bit, and just is the most lovely little mixture for everyday makeup.
Oh, I just love it. It's so creamy. It's so nice. It's honestly a really, really great shade dupe for my RMS Sublime that was really, really sadly discontinued. I used that pink forever. It has that really similar like bright pink feeling and then super, super creamy finish. So that's the lip. I've been wearing it so much. If I don't do the lip sleek, I'll just take a little bit of the Pearl Beauty blush and just slap that onto my lips. But this has pretty much been the go-to. Now, I've been playing a lot with the blush layering. I've seen a lot of like, again, like TikToks of people like going with a cream blush and then doing a powder blush after. So if I do just want an extra pop or if I'm like filming a video and I just want my blush to be much more apparent or I'm taking photos, what have you, I'll go in with the Persona Super Blush in the shade Bubble. It's a gorgeous bright pink. Gives a similar feeling to the Dior Backstage Blush that's just forever <laughs> out of stock. And the layering of the cream and the powder just kind of really helps to make the blush have a standing out impact on the face. And because this one's like super bright and super cool toned, I think it just brings everything out so nicely. And I just do a really, really soft dusting. I rub it off on the palm of my hand first, and then I just do a really, really soft touch of that on the skin and it just oh, looks so good. I love it. It's the perfect pink for spring. So when it comes to the eyes, I've pretty much just not been able to quit my little Inglot trio. This one specifically right here. I don't really touch this one. I'll write the exact number of this shade in the description box below, but it's just my ideal everyday lineup, truly. I haven't felt the need to like switch it out for any other shades. It just has everything I need in this little trio here. So I'm starting with the light creamy shade and I didn't do like too much powder on my eyelids. So I'm actually just gonna press this on to just give it a little brightness in there, but also to help out just in case we have some like lingering creasing concealer. So I'll just put that all over. And then I take a nice big fluffy brush and I just run that through the center shade, the lighter brown of the two. It's kind of like a gray brown. It's really pretty. And it's actually like quite light. It's quite a nice light brown for every day. It's not too deep whatsoever. And I just put that all over the eyelid and like right up into the crease. Now I'm happy to leave it like this for every day. I would either do this with the eyeshadow or do this with a bronzer. Either way, I'm happy with it. But if I wanna add a little bit more depth, then I'll just take a smaller brush and dip into that deepest shade there and just literally press that along the lash line. Sometimes I can also use this shade and do a little mini flick, a little mini wing, but I just really softly press that and just let the two diffuse into the eyelid. And that's that. If you wanted to amp it up even more, you could go in with like a shimmery shadow or just take your highlighter and just press that onto the center of the lid just to give it a little extra pizzazz. But like I said, I haven't really been reaching for highlighter all that much lately. So I very often would like skip this step, but you can add it just to give a little extra shine to the eyes. So for good measure to finish everything off, do another spritz of the setting spray. And then we can go in with mascara. Sometimes I've been just going without mascara, but on days that I have been, I've been using this little mini of the MAC Stack Mascara. It's honestly been lasting such a long time. I've been very impressed. And I'll just do a lovely little fresh layer of that. And once the mascara is applied, that is the finished look. I also realized I didn't touch on the fact that I've been leaving my lower lash line empty, which is not something that I do really ever. I usually always put a little something, whether it be bronzer or eyeshadow or something on my lower lash line, but I've just been letting her live free and clean. So this is the finished makeup look. Let me remove the band. I'm gonna have to go ahead and deal with my hair later, but this is the finished makeup look, everybody. This is the makeup look that I can't get enough of. It's the one that I've been doing for weeks, weeks straight. I can't stop doing it. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. What do you guys think of this makeup look? And I'd love to hear from you what some products are that you are loving in your everyday makeup lineup. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this makeup look and thank you so much for being here and getting ready with me today. I'm going to love you and leave you and I'll see you all very, very soon for a new video. Bye!